In this lesson, we're going to take a look at complex numbers. Complex numbers are a bigger set of numbers than the real numbers. So what kind of numbers have we been working with? You've really been working with these kind of numbers throughout your mathematical career. In Algebra 1 and Geometry, you've been working with the real number set. And real numbers, as you know, we can divide that into rational numbers and irrational numbers. So like rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a fraction, irrational numbers can't be. Like my favorite number, pi, is an irrational number. So is the square root of 2. Rational numbers are like 3 fourths and, and like 2 and like negative 17. Numbers that can be written as a fraction. However, complex numbers is kind of like this bigger number set. And a subset of complex numbers are imaginary numbers. Now, in order to deal with imaginary numbers, right, we have to create a whole new unit, i. And i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So anytime we see the square root of negative 1, we replace it with the letter i, or the variable i. So where did this number come from? Where did this square root of negative 1 come from? Well, mathematicians noticed that whenever you had a quadratic equation, like x squared equals 25, that you could solve that, and you could come up with two answers. Again, what number squared gives you 25? 5 and negative 5. And then they expanded this and looked at some of the other quadratic equations we've looked at. And it worked for everything except when we had a value like negative 25. Because they couldn't think of a way that x squared would give you, um, or that you could take the square root of this negative value. So x squared equals negative, twi uh, negative 25 ended up being a problem that no one could solve. Unless, and, and the reason they couldn't solve it was because of the square root of negative 1. Like, if they took the square root of both sides, you can take the square root of 25, that's not a problem. But it was this square root of negative 1 that became an issue. So they, they figured out a way, uh, more like a workaround, and came up with this imaginary unit. So let's take a look at how we can simplify some problems that involve negative underneath the radical. Again, the way you want to handle that is you want to split this up. Just like we do when we're simplifying a radical, we look and we separate it into, or we separate out the negative 1, the square root of negative 1. So we can rewrite the square root of negative 25 as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 25. And we know that the square root of 25 is 5, and again, we're going to use this i to represent the square root of negative 1 is i. What about this next problem, the square root of negative 72? Again, let's split that up. We'll split that up into the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 72. Now, I have to know how to simplify my radical further. So I know that 72 is uh, 36 times 2. So again, I'll simplify that uh, square root of 72 the same way I would any other problem. I'll figure out what's the biggest perfect square I can divide into 72, and then I will uh, work that out. So let's see. Here. So the square root of negative 1 is i, so I have i in my answer. The square root of 36 is 6, and then the square root of 2 I can't do anything with. So notice the order I wrote things in. We typically put the i in front of the radical, but after any integer values that we may come up with. The last one, negative 5 times the square root of negative 9. Okay, so negative 5, uh, the square root of negative 9, I can split into the square root of negative 1 and the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3, and I still have this i. So I'm multiplying it all together. So let's see here. Um, well, numbers times numbers. So negative 5 times 3, that gives me negative 15. And then i. Once you simplify radicals, um, the, the rest of the problems kind of end up being easy because we can treat i like a variable. So when we're taking a look at these problems that you see here in uh, these next three examples, we're just going to add them, subtract them. And we treat i like we do like terms. So we'll have 8 plus 5, which is 13, and we'll have uh, negative i plus 4i, and negative i, that's negative 1i, by the way, negative 1i plus 4i gives me 3i. So my final answer for this is 13 plus 3i. 
What about this next problem? Well, I like to deal with the negative signs. So I like to distribute my negative signs. So I don't have to think so hard about this because that's where I make mistakes when I have to think too hard about the problem. So that's here. So now what do I have going on? Let me look at my like terms. That's here. I have seven minus three and seven minus three is four. And then I have uh, minus six I plus six I, which is zero. So my final answer to this is just, just four. I don't have to write zero high. I could, but it's not necessary. Okay, my last problem. Again, I like to distribute through that negative sign so I don't have to think so hard. And then I can combine my like terms. Now, lucky for me, my like terms are kind of next to each other here. So I have 13 minus 2, and 13 minus 2 is 11. And then I have uh, negative 7i plus 5. I dropped my i there. Oops. That's a mistake. Let me fix that quick. That should be minus 7i plus 5i. Sorry about that. So negative 7i plus 5i, that's minus 2i. And that's my final answer. Okay. So at this point, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pause the video, and I'd like you to try out these four problems. So pause the video right now, and let's give these four problems a try. See if you can come up with the right answer. Okay, so the square root of negative 12, you should be able to split that up into the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 12. Uh, square root of 12, we can simplify down 4 and further and make that the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. We still got the square root of negative 1. The square root of 4 turns into 2. The square root of negative 1 is the i, and then the square root of 3 is left over. Final answer, 2i square roots of 3. What about this second one? Okay, I have 2 times, let's see here, oh, the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 54. And let's see here, uh, that is, let me think, that's 9 times 6. So uh, the square root of 9 times the square root of 6. So let's see here, so that gives me 2 times i times the square root of 9 is 3, and then I got the square root of 6, so 2 times 3 is 6, so my final answer, 6i times the square root of 6. Down here with number 2, again, I could drop the parentheses. Parentheses here aren't really doing anything for me, so I can simply go and combine my like terms. Like, let's say the 2 plus the negative 5. 2 plus negative 5 is negative 3. And then I can look here at negative i plus i, which just ends up being 0. So my final answer is, in fact, just a negative 3 by itself. In my second problem over here, 2i minus 3 minus 4i plus 5, I'm going to distribute through my negative sign. Okay, so negative 4i minus 5. Don't forget to distribute that to both things. And then I can combine my like terms. So let's see. I have the negative 3 and the negative 5. The negative 3 and the negative 5 give me negative 8. And then I have the 2i minus 4i, which gives me minus 2i. We typically write all our answers in the form a plus b a plus b i. So we, we do what we call the real part first. That's the real part. And then we add the imaginary part second. Imaginary part. And we put those together, we have a complex number. And this is what we call the standard form of a complex number. So if you see that in the homework problems, that's what that means. What about multiplication? Well, multiplication works the same thing. In this first problem, we'll just distribute that through. So 4i times negative 6, that's negative 24i. And then we have 4i times i, which is 4i squared, just like with variables. Here's the only difference. Let's remember that i is equal to the square root of negative 1. What happens when I square both sides? So I'm squaring the square root of negative 1. So that gives me i squared there on the left-hand side, and the squared and the square root cancel each other out. So i squared is equal to negative 1. This is the real big difference between i and a variable, is that when you have i to some power, we can simplify it down. So in this particular case, we know that i squared is equal to negative 1. So when I go up here to my problem, I need to replace the i squared that I see right here I need to replace that with a negative 1. So I'm going to do that. So I'll replace that i squared with a negative 1. And then I can simplify down my problem more. So 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. 
and then the minus 24i because, again, we put the real part before the complex part. That is my final answer. Moving over to my second problem. This is a foiling issue, so we foil here. So we have a binomial times a binomial, so we foil. So 9 times negative 4 is negative 36. The last, 9 times 7i plus 63i. The insides, negative 2i times negative 4 is plus 8i. And then the lasts, negative 2i times 7i is negative 14i squared. Now, again, I have this i squared that I got going on right here, right? So there's this i squared. So I need to replace my i squared with negative 1. So let's do that here. So negative 36 plus 63i plus 8i minus 14 times negative 1. All right. And I'll go through and I'll combine my like terms. So that's here, negative 36. Put those two together. 63 plus a 71i plus 14, because I did the multiplication, right? I did the multiplication. Negative 14 times negative 1 is positive 14. And then I have some more like terms to combine. So negative 12 plus 71i is my final answer. So again, take a second, pause the video, work through these three problems, see if you end up with the correct answer. I'll show you how to do them here in a second. Pause the video now. Okay, negative 3i times 10i. That'll give me negative 30i squared. And again, I replace the i squared with a negative 1, which means my final answer here is positive 30. The second problem, distribute the i. Distribute the i. So I get 8i minus i squared. Again, I replace the i squared with a negative 1. So I end up with 8i minus negative 1. So if I switch that around, that'll give me positive i plus 8i. Sorry, positive 1 plus 8i. Okay? Last guy. I must foil. So foil. So firsts, outsides, insides, lasts. Again, I'll combine my like terms here, plus 2i. I'll make sure I change my i squared to a negative 1, so that's minus negative 1. So 15 minus negative 1 is the same as adding the opposite. So 16 plus 2i, final answer. So what in the world does this have anything to do with quadratic equations like we talked about in the last chapter or in the last section? Well, I'm going to show you. Check this out. x squared plus 4 equals 0. We'd subtract 4 from both sides, and we get x squared equals negative 4. And here, we'd say there's no real solution. Well, that's exactly correct. That didn't change. However, now, we can deal with taking the square root of both sides. Because we know how to handle the square root of a negative number. So we end up with plus or minus the square root of negative 4, which we know how to deal with. So we can change this into plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4. Square root of 4, we can do. That's 2. The square root of negative 1 is i. My final answer is x equals plus or minus 2i. Let me show you what this actually means. x squared plus 4. That would be the graph of my quadratic equation shifted up 4 units. So this would be what the equation of x squared plus 4 looks like. This is x squared plus 4. Notice how it doesn't cross the x-axis. Because it doesn't cross the x-axis, there are no real solutions. That didn't change. But that's why we added the word real here, because the solutions aren't real. Instead, there are two imaginary solutions to this problem. Cool. There are still two solutions. They're just imaginary. Okay. Let's take a look at this next problem. So 2x squared minus 11 equals negative 47. I'm going to add 11 to both sides. So I get 2x squared equals, let's see here, that'll give me negative 36. Then I'll divide both sides by 2. We still want to isolate the x squared just like we were in those problems. And I get x squared equals negative 18. I'll take the square root of both sides just like I've been doing. And I get x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 18 which I can simplify down. That's negative 1 times 9 times 2. The square root of 9 times the square root of 2, which gives me my final answer of plus or minus 3i square roots of 2. That's my final answer, and there's two answers there. 
Finding the zeros is the same thing we were doing in the last problem. We just changed the directions a little bit. Finding the zeros is the same as setting my function equal to zero and solving. So the process is identical, right? I'm going to subtract my 20 from both sides. I'm going to divide both sides by 4. I'll get x squared equals negative 5. I'll take the square root of both sides, and I'll get x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 5. Final answer, plus or minus i square roots of 5. All right, take a look at these two problems. I'd like you to practice solving these two quadratic equations. Hey, spoiler alert, you're going to end up with an imaginary answer. See what you can do with these two problems. Pause the video now. Now that you've had an opportunity to work through these two problems, let me show you how to work through them. You can check your answers to make sure you got them right. So x squared plus 11 equals 3. We'll subtract 11 from both sides. Let's see here. 3 minus 11 is negative 8. So I get x squared equals negative 8. I'll take the square root of both sides. Oh, that x equals plus or minus. Let's see here. That would be negative 1 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. That all gives me that negative 8. When I simplify that all down, I get 2i square roots of 2. Final answer. What about this other problem? Subtract your 33 from both sides. I get 5x squared equals negative 30. Okay, uh, divide by 5. Okay, x squared equals negative 6. Take the square root of both sides. I get x equals plus or minus the square root. Well, that'll be negative 1 times 6. Can't really do much there. I get i square roots of 6. Final answer. All right, guys, there's some homework problems for you to try. Go ahead and take a look at those. Try them out. It's in Big Ideas. If you have questions, don't be afraid to stop in during office hours. Thanks, guys.